What is up guys, hope you're doing well out there. Today, we're talking about Greg Lauren. Finally, after teasing this for a while, I was waiting for a couple of pieces to arrive in the mail. These days with the whole corona situations, like getting packages can be a difficult thing, especially when shipped internationally. But today is the day I'm really excited. As always, this is not scripted or anything. Like I haven't, I usually don't do like proper research for my videos, to be honest. I just freestyle it. Foot, 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 freestyle. So Greg Lauren, so maybe a couple of sentences to who he really is, right? He's the nephew of Ralph Lauren, right? The famous fashion designer, AKA Rich Kid. Uh, Greg is now 50 years old. He is or was an actor, right? He played him like Batman and whatever. Then also he's an artist. Right, paintings and stuff. You can even find like Greg Lauren paintings on Grailed if you're looking. And then a couple of years ago, he started in fashion. And I remember like the first time when I became aware of Greg Lauren was his like first season hoodies with the tent, the Nomad hoodie or whatever it was called. I remember like seeing the pictures on from PNP Firenze. And I thought, okay, well, that's, this is really interesting. And back then PNP, like they didn't have any prices on the website. So obviously I didn't know and I didn't inquire, but I thought, okay, that's definitely an interesting brand, right? That should, that I should keep an eye on. And I haven't bought Greg like then for the next years. I don't really remember when I probably started buying Greg like four years ago or something. And I started off with the blazers, right? Because I absolutely love like the silhouettes that he does and the peak lapels and the like Victorian kind of style and awesome fabrics as well, right? Love the tweet, the Donegal tweets and stuff. So pretty, pretty interesting, you know, and he does like those designs where he has like the blazers and then the vest, the waistcoat is sewn in, right? So it's basically one piece, which yeah, it's definitely interesting. He does cool designs as well. I would say he has like sort of two lines, even though he only has one line, right? It feels like they're two separate lines. One is more like blazers and like Victorian chic, I don't even know how to describe it. And the other one is like hardcore homeless stuff, you know what I mean? And those two like are to me pretty separate, but I love both, right? Which is cool combination for me. And I used to have a couple of blazers, but I've sold them all. So I don't have any Greg blazers at the moment, but I used to have like this awesome, I, I'll try to get a picture somewhere. It was this awesome like black, I think it was called like artist blazer. I don't know. It was super like ultra thin, linen material had like peak lapel and one was like one was like folded on top i don't know difficult to describe but it was a double breasted jacket and whatnot pretty cool and then i don't know i had like a other different cotton ones and stuff so i had a couple of blazers and they fit really well like super slim fit though right you have to be aware of that and yeah then i used to have like lots of other greg stuff again as with most of my pieces i sold them all actually except one hoodie and now I'm just rebuying Greg as much as I can. Why I do that, I'll tell you in a minute. But maybe let's just start off looking at my hoodie here that you have probably seen in a lot of videos, right? When I do like fits, I usually wear this because it's basically like a black simple hoodie, right? From far at least, right? When you look closer, there are lots of details. So this is the destroyed hero hoodie, right? It has, it says hero here in the back. And that has the number 10 and lots of distressing throughout. And distressing is obviously a big topic with Greg Lauren, right? He distresses a lot. And I know like distressing is a polarizing topic, right? Some people love it, some people hate it. I personally love it when it's done well. And I think Greg is the one who does it best on this planet, in my opinion. You know, distressing is really, like can easily be overdone or not tasteful or like there's so many options where you can fail and i think like really greg the master the art of distressing if that makes any sense yeah and i have a couple of like older pieces here and a couple of newer pieces and i kind of want to like talk about like how i view right the way or the last years of greg lauren like it started out i remember i remember like the first pieces they were like that biggest, best quality you can find. Like it was insane when I bought my first Greg piece, like how thick the material is. I didn't even know like the materials existed, right? In such a high quality. Yeah, it really feels like they're done at home by a real person. And I mean, they are done by a real person, right? But that feeling is unmatched in my opinion from Greg pieces, right? Other stuff like they feel kind of like machine produced, mass produced and whatnot. But the Greg stuff is, it's hard to describe, like it's a, it feels like a DIY piece, but that is done by a master, right? Like usually DIY really sounds like uh, somebody who doesn't know what he's doing, 
but in their case, I don't know, it's really, really hard to describe as you can see. But yeah, we should look at some pieces, maybe you'll get what I mean. So maybe if we go uh, in chronological order, right, I think that makes sense because I kind of want to talk about the quality as well. And so this is the first piece, or the oldest piece that I have rather, and that is from 2016. As you know, Greg usually puts like the, the date here on the inside, so that's November 11th, 2016. And yeah, it's an ultra heavy cotton, right? Feels high, high quality. And this is like the chunkiest YKK metal zip you can find so that's size 11, which is pretty chunky for, for a sweater. And it is really hard to close. <laughs> like it took me like 10 minutes the first time when I tried to close it and that was really frustrating but it kind of like that idea kind of has grown on me you know when I bought my first zippers for Skinosh right I used like Riri metal zips right I thought okay what's the most expensive highest quality zip I can find right so Riri metal zip that was my conclusion so I drove to Switzerland to buy many many zips for an insane amount of money Right, some zips like even they cost more than like I don't know a, a sweater that you buy somewhere. Right. Anyway, so those were ultra high quality metal zips, thick everything, and they were sometimes like really not working properly. You know, and when you buy like a I don't know YKK plastic zip, like they are cheap, but they always work. You know what I mean? But this hoodie and the zip here and the problems with the closure really like reminded me of like the artisanal side right you want to buy high quality stuff but obviously there are going to be problems if you're not producing at a huge huge scale and that's obviously like from a consumer perspective can kind of suck but i've come to appreciate the romance of that whole concept you know what i mean let's say i, I make a bag like it takes me one week one full week like 40 to 60 hours to do one bag i use the highest quality materials as you can find but it's not going to be as practical as a bag that is like manufactured in a proper factory right you can buy an h&m bag and it's going to be probably more functional but it's not made by hand so choose your battles i guess but that zip really kind of reminded me of that concept so this is what the Greg Lauren destroyed Hoodie Hero looks like when worn. By the way, this is kind of a signature distress detailing that lots of Greg pieces have, lots of hoodies at least. I had a couple of hoodies in the past and this is always something that I've seen. Now that's a closer look at the zip. And like once you know how to handle it, it usually works okay. <laughs> Yeah, but as I said, like first time it took me like 10 minutes to to close that up. But yeah, it's ultra high quality. The cotton feels really heavy and amazing. Right, long drawstrings, which are kind of a, a washed look. One of my go-to hoodies these days, and I've had this for a while now, but I don't feel like I need another hoodie because this really does the job for me. I prefer zipped over regular hoodies. And you can see here like all the distressing going on, right? It's not probably not that visible because I'm wearing a t-shirt underneath, but here you can see like the skin coming through right, for ventilation. Basic but awesome hoodie in my opinion. So that one is from 2016. Then I guess next one, which I just recent, recently purchased, as you probably know, but this is from 2017, June 2017. And I've wanted this for so long, I'm not sure if I've told the story before, but I bought this same jacket like two years ago and I got ripped off on, on Grailed because it was a woman's jacket, right? He sold it as a men's jacket, it was a woman's jacket, so it felt like it was ultra cropped and didn't fit at all. And the guy who sold it on Grail even was a Grail employee, which really sucked. So I couldn't do anything about it. I tried to complain, but yeah. Um, anyway, so I gave it to my wife and she absolutely loved this. Looked exactly the same as, as the men's version. And then we went to Paris Fashion Week and her suitcase got stolen with this one in. So kind of, kind of a weird story, but I was really happy when I found this one again, right on Grail. That if you haven't seen the pickups video where I talked about this, uh, go ahead and watch it but anyway this is from 2017 and 
as I said before, like the quality of this thing, like this is not a shirt, right? This is a jacket because it's ultra, ultra heavy. This like felted wool or whatever. And the quality is just unmatched. Like it's really hard. I wouldn't even like know a brand that would produce something in, of that caliber. On the one hand, quality, but then on the other hand, you have like this artisanal touch, right? It just really feels like a human being worked on this and a human being did work on that, right? <laughs> But to me, it's really important to feel that. I don't know. So yeah, that's 2017. All right, so this is the Greg Lauren overshirt. As you can see, it fits quite oversized on me. So this is a size four, size extra large. Has like those super elongated sleeves. And then you have like, as Greg Lauren usually does, right? You have those patchwork details. In this case, it's made out of jeans material. And then has two front kangaroo pockets. And there's so much detailing going on here. And kind of frayed hems all over. Yeah, I just love the way this fits on the body. Then the next piece that I've also shown before which is from fall winter 2018 again ultra ultra high quality and i've never seen such like thick materials all right with so many details i mean this just alone like this not detail here probably takes like i don't know four or five hours to produce i would say it's crazy crazy and again those chunky heavy metal zips right ultra hard to close so not really practical size 10 metal zip many metal zips this is the long studio flight jacket. Here's some detailing. I would have to put this on a scale because I really want to know. My guess this weighs like four and a half, five kilograms. Do you remember the video that I did about like my old Instagram fits, right? There was this one fit where I was wearing the Greg Lauren winter jacket that I bought. And this was again, one of the most amazing pieces. And I really regret selling this one. The downside is it's even heavier than this jacket and it's not warm at all, right? So it's not really functional, but I could really appreciate like the amount of work that went into this piece right and the like so many different fabrics and like everything was distressed by hand and hand dyed and whatnot i don't know I've, I've really come to appreciate like the older pieces from greg and i'm trying to buy as many as i can to be honest because the older stuff like it's kind of dying out i guess but we'll come to that in the end first maybe let's talk about like my recent acquisition which is from the current season right this is spring summer 20 good old-fashioned flannel shirt and you could tell like the quality is there right it's not like a regular flannel shirt you could tell this is a greg piece but there's a difference in my opinion at least to the other ones right and this is my latest purchase the spring summer 20 flannel right in the washed orange colorway so as you can see it like has this signature band color right that lots of greg pieces have and then this obviously high quality buttons and then you have like this kimono style closure here as well right so you basically put this through here and then put this on top of the button yeah pretty cool detail but I prefer to leave the shirt open I just love the way like it flows you know it sits on the body it feels kind of kimono as well you know because it's so like boxy and it feels like kind of you throw something on right rather than a fitted shirt and then this is kind of the signature for greg as well right those sleeves where you don't have a button closure right you have two buttons here and then they're open and they're designed to like kind of hang on top of your hand a bit right so you can obviously put them back if it annoys you and 
as you can see here the ends are kind of like left undone and lots of fringes here as well and then two kangaroo pockets which gives it more of a jacket feeling rather than a shirt but yeah and anyway i absolutely love this piece it kind of is perfect for summer right for summer as a jacket but then also great for layering as well because it's not too thick and pretty roomy right so you can wear a lot of stuff underneath but also stuff on top and yeah other than that you have two chest pockets here as well as you can see here from the pattern like it looks or it is rather longer in the back than it is in the front and for reference here this is duty plate and i'm not sure if that's true but with the older pieces it, it feels like the text that's written in there is really written by hand and with the newer ones you can really tell like it's obviously written by hand once but then it's like printed or whatever like copied and printed and i mean i guess you kind of have to do that probably when you like scaling up the production right you can't just spend all day like writing labels but yeah kind of loses that artisanal handmade touch to me and i mean yes it's a cool piece i'm happy with this one it's obviously better quality than most flannels out there but i can really tell the difference in quality between the older pieces and the new pieces and as i said before like lots of like store owners even told me told me the same thing they're kind of unhappy these days with the quality of greg and I mean, yes, I think it's true. On the other hand, like, I think it's really hard, like from a brand perspective, right, to scale up your production somehow and then remain quality and pricing and whatnot. So it's always easy to complain, right? But when you look at the other side, I kind of get it. But anyway, that's why I'm trying to buy like all the older pieces that I can, right? So size three, size four, if you have Greg, hit me up, right? I'm trying, really trying to buy as much as I can. Reason for that is, you're probably not gonna be able to find higher quality stuff as the old Greg stuff, in my opinion, at least. And if he's like going down in quality, you know, the older stuff is the only thing that you can do, you can buy. And there's lots of old pieces as well that you can get for good prices on Grail, in my opinion. And the last thing I wanna talk about is the sample sales that he makes, right? I think once or twice a year, he has like a sample sale with like all the crazy ideas that he's selling, lots of one-on-one -on -one pieces for good prices. And I love the idea of sample sales because you can really get like one of one pieces, right? From a pretty awesome designer, in my opinion, one of the best designers and for a good price, right? Imagine like CCP having like one of one samples, like in a sample sale with the crazy experiments that he does and whatnot. Or imagine like Akram doing the same thing, you know? Like they're kind of losing when they do that, right? Because they're kind of like giving away their ideas, that ideas that didn't make it to the production table. But from a consumer perspective, it's so awesome to have like one-on-one -on -one pieces in my opinion, right? There is like crazy Greg stuff, like there's a hoodie with a cape, right? With a Superman cape that like basically goes down to your feet. And like all that like crazy stuff, right? Some of this is bearable, some of, some of it is not so much, <laughs> but it doesn't matter to me, you know? It's like, and to be honest, I think that like Greg is gonna be, it's gonna be a big name in like 10 years, 20 years, I don't know. Right now he's 50. Right, so he's probably not gonna do it forever, but I think it's gonna be a big name. It's kind of a bigger name-ish now, I guess. But like when I started buying Greg like a couple of years ago, like nobody knew him, right? And now it's still kind of okay. I know that some or lots of people actually hate him or hate the stuff that he does, but I, I don't understand to be honest. Like to me, it's a matter of taste, of course. And I know like some of the stuff is pretty loud, but you just have to pick the stuff that you like. And as I said, quality is up there, all the pieces. You can sometimes get like really good deals on Grailed. And I only buy on Grailed, obviously, right? The Greg stuff, if you buy that retail, is just insane. And you can sometimes really get good deals because Greg is not a big name, you know what I mean? Like CCP, obviously, like you know, it's always gonna have the value, right? You, you're not getting a steal on CCP, right? If it's if it's the cheap drip sneaker, for example, it's gonna be messed up, you know what I mean? Like there's always gonna be, it's always gonna be a fair price. But with Greg, since the demand is not always the same, right? Or the demand is in general like so small that you can only hit up like a couple of people who are really interested in one piece, right? So if they're not looking at this time or they don't wanna spend the money or whatever, you can sometimes really get a good deal. And I have made good deals on Greg stuff and I hopefully will continue to do so. So yeah, anyway, that's my Greg Lauren video. Let me know your thoughts. Do you like Greg? Do you hate Greg? I know lots of you 
I'm not the biggest fan, as I've heard like in the previous comments, but as I also said, I'm a big fan. So yes, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the old like button down below. Subscribe to the channels, new videos coming every week. You know the deal. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.